starts with a 4 a.m. wake up call, alarm, get up, shower, iron my uniform, and then I get on a bus that takes me to the airport at around five o'clock. Arriving here around 5.30, and then we prepare the aircraft for the first flight of the day, and we try to get airborne by six o'clock. Being a day VFR, we can only fly during daylight hours, and here in the tropics, that generally goes from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And over the course of the day, an average crew will do uh, four to five or six different trips with uh, 12 to 15 seconds being takeoffs and landings. And then uh, we consult our, uh, our books and make sure that we're all up with our licenses and our, uh, all the aviation documents are up to date and, and proper. And then at that point, we get a dispatch from our uh, organization that tells us where we're going to be going, um, how many passengers we have, and the fuel requirements for the trip. And most trips, most resorts are within about a half an hour flight. So within an hour and a half or so, we'll be back, and then it's repeated all over again. We get a dispatch telling us about our next trip, fuel requirements. So it's fuel, fly, come back, and repeat. We call ourselves the Barefoot Pilot Association. Now from the waist up, we look like any other airline pilot. We have the shirt and the epaulets. But from the waist down, we're wearing shorts and we wear flip-flops. And they call us the barefoot pilots because in flight, we take our flip-flops off and actually use our pedals, or use our feet on the pedals. It gives a great feel. You know, you can actually feel the inputs. So, uh, you know, that's one of the advantages between this and flying for a larger airline. They, they can't kick their shoes off and fly barefoot. I mean, they could, but I don't think it's allowed. Yeah, it might get smelly. What's really nice about it is that you're always seeing different people on all these trips. There's people from Europe, there's people from Asia, there's people from North America or the Middle East. And uh, everybody arriving always has a smile on their face and that's the best part of the job. Most of the captains that are working here are very experienced guys. I would say the average captain probably has over 10,000 hours of flying on floats. So they know weather and they know when it's safe to go and when it isn't safe to go. And they'll tell that to dispatch and our management and they'll always listen to us. I think most seaplane guys like to be challenged by the job. If it's always just flat water and sunny skies, well, it becomes kind of boring. Sure, we do land in five or six foot swells, and uh, there's different landing techniques that are involved with that, but paramount to that is we're always looking for the safest and uh, calmest water to land. We have almost 50 planes, and every plane has to have a daily inspection. Now, they can usually do that at the dock. And then there's, I'm not sure, I'm not an engineer, I don't know what the schedule is for the, for the maintenance, but with 50 planes here, 
always there's gonna be one or two planes in maintenance on a daily basis. So they're inspecting every spot of the plane to make sure there's no corrosion. This handles regular maintenance, regular scheduled maintenance, but also day-to-day -day operational maintenance. If we have a, a problem with the float or a problem in some of the instrumentation, we want to get it looked at right away, so it's put in here and done right away so we can get the plane back into rotation as quickly as possible. For someone like me, this is all I want to do. So I don't really care, but uh, yeah, the more experience you get, the better you become. Like at the end of the day, you know, if you enjoy what you're doing, it doesn't feel like a job, really, you know? At least once a day, I'll have somebody tell me I have the best job in the world, and I totally agree. Flying higher and higher